everyone, Laura at Broken Wind, back on the clarinet repair. A couple of things, firstly, um, having watched that last video back, um, sorry some of the lighting was quite bright and shiny and slightly causing problems with the focus I think. I um, Here in my workshop I like my woodman bench right next to a lovely big window to have the natural light come in but that obviously doesn't work too well when trying to convey stuff to you so I have now put up a particularly unattractive dust sheet <laughs> over my uh, window in the hope that you can see stuff better um, on this repair. Um, so lesson learnt, still new to YouTube, bear with me. Okay so for cleaning um, the pillars um, is a good place to start. Um, I use, I'm using, well actually for all of this cleaning I'm using a silver cloth um, this one is actually made by Dennis Wick. Um, they, yeah, do some great ones. They're they're quite strong and rigid. They do create fluff when you you cut them or rip them up and things, which I'll explain why I bother doing that in a minute. Um, so you do get these little strands everywhere, but they are actually impregnated with like a. I could tell you what the chemical is, but I honestly don't know off the top of my head. Um, they've got a, a polishing. Um, substance in them but what I do <coughs> is um, just ripped a bit off you can see probably see there it's all frayed ripped a bit off and I've stuck it I can show you actually bear with on my door my little drawer knob here so I've just tied it around there because then I can use it as a ragging tool for doing the pillars because I can just be one hand now and I prop the drawer with my knee against it and then what I do is I just wrap it round the pillar and it, it means you can rub it against it and it will clean off any tarnish and dirt and residue unless it's particularly stubborn I might need to apply some cleaning agent but um, generally for the pillars it's not too bad there we go, that's looking better oh, I don't know if you can see well enough there it's now got a bit of shine about it. So I'm going to go through and basically do all of those top and bottom joint. And then I will crack on with the keys. Okay, so now the pillars are all clean. You can see here. Um, I need to do the keys. Um, and what I use for that is some silver on this type of instrument. Um, and here I have some well used polishing cloths that I was showing you before. but. I've been using them for a while. You can see this is my one for putting on and my one for taking it off. So literally just a bit on the cloth. And then it's just a case of rubbing all over. Now, when doing this, depending on what type of service is required on the instrument, I have to be quite careful not to get any really on the pad as best I can. You can clean it off, but it's still not great to cover it in it. And there's these little bits of cork as well, which you don't need to worry about so much, but it does make them look a little bit dirty if you get it on polish on it. Um, so it's just a case of rubbing around all the different bits and bobs that make up the key. Um, this isn't the sort of work you'd expect the player to do, because obviously to be this thorough you need to take the instrument apart, but um, it's something that is pretty standard in everything I do really. Okay, so it's all gone on, and then to get it off, use the clean one to take off the worst of it. And I've chosen this key to show you because it's quite one of the more fiddly ones for cleaning because it's all joined on one with all the different rings in there so you've got to be able to get in and you want to make sure you clean off all the polishing agent and there's no residue left behind because it doesn't look nice and um, it doesn't really help matters when you're trying to make something nice and shiny and clean and it's got bits of residue, polish residue left on it. So there we go, this is best I can get in there but you can probably maybe show you here, you see in here it's still quite tarnished and um, still got the polish in there. So what I do is use the same bit of ragging that I did before with the pillars and it just gives you the chance to get in there where you can't with the, the cloth or your fingers and especially on the sides of the rings and things. Get in there and clean it off. It's 
it's a task that takes quite a while. Well, actually this one, a new instrument and in good condition, it's actually not too bad to do. Um, but some of the older ones where they're really tarnished and the plating starting to come apart and that kind of thing, it can be quite a laborious task. But this one's been nice and easy. And there we go. Um, sometimes where you see the key, the top of the key where it holds the pad, they have these little arm that comes up. Sometimes you've got to get in there, so I actually just use a cotton bud and um, just run it along the sides there and just make sure you get every last little bit of dirt and polish off. And I think that's looking a little bit in there, looking pretty good. There we go, nice and shiny cleaned up okay so I've actually done that with all of them that was just the last one I wanted to show you so I'm now in a position where we can start doing some of the, the bits to get it back together again. each key has a little piece of cork or sometimes felt on you can see in here this little cork bumper here and that's just a couple of reasons really it's this one here on this key is because that part of it touches the body like that so it will move on the body and you don't want to have the added percussion of hearing the metal clink on the wood so you have a little piece of cork which dampens the, the noise of the actual movement and you can see this one here is coming off so we need to replace that and the same with these one there's ones here that's supposed to have one there and it's come off and this one's broken uh, this one here this one actually is because it links two keys together so it's you will have metal on metal so the cork, cork helps as a, a sound dampener to stop the metal clinking when you play but also this cork is a, a regulator between the two keys to ensure that they close exactly the same time and they they have a different mechanism um, than some of the others so they work they work in harmony to um, make the right notes come out basically um, and Actually, that one's okay. I'll clean it up a little bit. Yeah, so these have all got ones missing. Uh, this one's kind of cool. It's called Crow's Foot, this bit here. And um, there's slightly different designs in them, but all, they're all pretty much shaped like that. And there's a little piece of cork on there, and again, that's a, a regulatory one. Um, and But this is missing one on the back here. So we need to change those. So what I do with that is I have this scraper. Um, it's not sharp well I suppose it's got it's got an edge to it probably a better way of saying it than actually being sharp as you can see it's not going to cut me but it, it's good for scratching purposes so all I do is scratch off the old cork and then I have there's different cork sheets that I use and felt um, there's not as much clarinet on, uh, clarinet hold on. <laughs> there's not much felt on a clarinet um, but things like flutes and things will use the felt felt more so occasionally you get the odd little bit on the clarinet um, but with clarinet I tend to use the cork so we've got different sheets there's um, that one's one mil uh, there's this one which is 0 0.5 mil and it goes up to well as much as you want really it goes pretty fat and um, there's some thicker one there I think that might be 1.6 maybe I don't think that's the two. I'll reference it next to another one. But um, so for a lot of these, most of the clarinet ones, I use the one mil. So what I do, I have some double-edged razor blades here that I just snap, so that I've got just use the single one. So I've got to mind the fingers again. And all I do is I have some contact adhesive. It's a well-used tube, this one. <laughs> and. I just put a little bit on where the cork needs to go and then again on a piece of cork and then I actually let it dry off a bit separate um, being a contact adhesive if you let it the two pieces glue the two pieces let them kind of dr not dry but they go to this sort of not tacky wetting well they're tacky but they're not wet it's hard to explain. <laughs> do it by sight and by feel. And then you put the two together. Um, so I'll just cut that little bit off actually. And then while that one's thinking about life, I will do some of the others. So this one, the cork's come off, but there's still a bit of previous glue residue there, so we'll just clean that off. That one's okay actually. 
just want to scrape off the remainder of what's been broken. That one's completely missing. There's nothing, not even any residue there. It has a tiny, tiny little bit. It's supposed to be on the end there. Obviously, after however long you get to know which, what needs to be where, when, just by sight, so you can see what's wrong. This is a common one that a common one that scuffs and breaks because it's actually this key sits on the instrument top part of the instrument like that and you can see the key sticks out so when you put the bottom joint on this key links to this one and it sits together like that so this moves on that one and because of the way it is putting the instrument together you often find that that cork gets broken and scuffed so it's a real a real common repair that one okay i think that's all it needs doing on this instrument so i'll just what I normally do is I don't do them one by one, like I've just showed you, what I do is I do them en masse, so I'll, I'll prep all the keys and glue them all up and glue the things so you're only sort of waiting once, as it were, rather than doing every individual one, I just cut chunks off from a big strip and stick them on, so that's what I'll do now with these few. Often with a repad, I'd expect to change all of the corks and things regardless, but this instrument's only a couple of years old and I don't think they actually really need it. It's just the ones that are worn. Um, it doesn't need like a generic, all of them doing type job. That would just be a bit wasteful, really. So, I'll just do those that are necessary. Just doing a big blob here of glue on the cork. Sort me out for all of them. There we go, and it's just a case of waiting. Literally watching glue dry. <laughs> a bit more fun than watching paint dry, maybe, because I'm about to do something with it in a minute. But this is when I normally sit here and uh, watch clips of Ben Crow on my phone. But as I'm recording you on my phone, I will sit and wait. So, anyway, I'm going to leave you for a minute. You don't need to sit and watch this, and I'll be back in a sec. So this first one's ready to go now. It's you can still feel it's tacky, but it's not wet anymore. So what I'm going to do? Hold on, my razor blade's hiding. Just place it on where it needs to be and give it a bit of a bit of a push. And then what I do is I use the razor blade. in a sort of downward motion and use the side of the key as the guide and just run it along the edge and it then obviously shapes it to the key and just take a final one I'll show you what I'm doing in a second just put them on my fingers there we go so what I've done there Hopefully you can see, there's something I can point with, here we go, you can see there. So what I've done is actually put a slight taper on it from bottom to top, because again that helps with noise reduction, rather than having a big chunk of cork, you actually got less contact with the body there than the actual width of the key. So it's just, and it also looks nice and pretty, rather than just having a big hunk of cork stuck on the side. So there we go, that's one done, replaced jobs are good and now I might when it actually gets on the body I might because it's new I might need to just sand a little bit off to ensure that this opens enough for tuning purposes you don't want to have it so that it barely this cork's so big that this barely moves and you, you don't really get any clarity of, of tone coming out let alone um, tuning issues so uh, there can still be tweaking yet to do but the cork is now on just got to wait for this one to do sort all these ones out and then we're ready to do some padding. <laughs> 